Hello, and thank you for joining us today. I'm Jeff with DNH Distributing, and joining me from Cisco today is Rajat. Thank you, Jeff, for having me. Thank you for coming. And he's here to talk to us a little bit about Mobility Express today. Mobility Express is a really cool technology that allows you to install controller based wireless solutions without having to purchase the controller. So Rajat, tell us a little bit about what Mobility Express is and how it kind of fits in with Cisco. Sure. So when you think about small to medium customers, I mean, what they need is they need something that is simple to set up, simple to manage. They need something that is reliable. It has some built-in redundancy. And most importantly, they need something that is cost-effective and it's affordable. So what Cisco has done is Cisco has designed this Mobility Express solution. And what it is is it is actually a virtual controller that runs on 11 AC Wave 2 access points. It is really simple to set up. It has a very simple UI interface to manage it. And uh, in terms of the features, it supports both advanced enterprise-grade WLAN and RF features. And as I said again, you know, the solution has to be affordable. Most importantly, Mobility Express is a very affordable solution from Cisco. Absolutely. And those are all important things that we hear all about in the small business world all the time. So you said that there's a lot of different uh, access points out there. Uh, what, what can run this? What access points are going to work with Mobility Express? Right. So if you look at the Cisco 11AC Wave 2 access point portfolio, starting from the 1800 series access points, going all the way up to 28, 38, and 4800 series access points, all of these access points can run Mobility Express. And what I have on the table here is I have three flavors of those access points. I have the 1815W access point, which is a great access point for hospitality and dorm rooms. This can run Mobility Express. We have the 1815I access point, which is great for retail. And we also have our enterprise level 2800 series access points, which is great for high density deployments. So you really have quite the gambit here. Everything from hospitality, dorm room type stuff, all the way up to enterprise. Uh, all the way up to the large scale access points for people who are you know, starting to look into uh, doing location analytics with, uh, with RFID tagging and all kinds of the new technology uh, surrounding that. That is correct. And, and another thing I would, I would like to mention, Jeff, is so people may ask, what is the difference between uh, you know, these different flavors of access points? The, the, so the thing that you have to remember is that it's just a scale. From a feature standpoint, you know, all the software features are support, supported across these access points. So for the 1800 series access points, the scale is 50 access points, 1000 clients, and a single Mobility Express deployment. On the 2800, 3800 series access points, we can support up to 100 access points, 2000 clients in a single Mobility Express deployment. And these are all indoor access points. Besides these access points, Mobility Express is also supported on the outdoor access points, the 1540 and the 1560, which are also 11 AC wave two access points. Yes, because one thing's for certain, there aren't fewer clients out there with wireless on them today. So we talked a little bit about the access points and the different models. It, does any model support Mobility Express, or are we looking for something when we order them in order to make it a Mobility Express access point? Great question, Jeff. So. You know, when you order access points from Cisco, you order something with like a Air AP 2800 K9. But if you want the access points to come preloaded with Mobility Express software, what you have to do is you have to order the Air AP 2800 K9C. So C is, the, is what you have to remember when you're ordering the Mobility Express access points. So when you order, uh, there's a different SKU which ends with a C, and what that means is It'll, those APs will come preloaded with Mobility Express access points, uh, Mobility Express software code from the factory. Okay, and do all the models have to be C models or just one of them? So you can, you need, in order to run the controller, you need at least one with a C model so that can run okay. the controller. But if you have additional cap of APs, they can actually join this controller that is running. Okay, and do all the access points have to be the same model? as the version that's running the C? So you can always do a mix and match, Jeff. You don't have to have the same models. I mean, you can um, have uh, 2800 mixed with 1815 or the 1830, and even outdoor APs. You know, you can always do a mix and match. That's great, because there's a different access point for a lot of different environments, a lot of different situations. What you're running in the front office might not be what you're running back you know, by your MRI and your x-ray machines, you know, the different situations, different access points. So you mix and match, you got a lot of leeway to pick your network design and the right access point for each environment. 
So that's great. Now, one of the questions that we get asked a lot, uh, you know, we hear a lot about Meraki and SMB and a lot of the different Cisco solutions. That, but we know that, you know, there's certain times where one might fit a little bit better into a particular scenario. And can you tell us a little bit, you know, it, looking at Meraki, looking at Mobility Express, you know, when is, when is the right tool for the job uh, going to be Mobility Express? Sure, great question, Jeff. So if the customer has a cloud-first strategy and they're okay with the subscription cost, position Meraki. I mean, it's a great Wi-Fi solution. Absolutely. Um, if cost is a concern to the customer, I mean, there are cost-conscious customers out there, they want to deploy a set-and-forget type of Wi-Fi deployment, position Mobility Express. If the customer needs the control function to be locally present in the premises and they want redundancy, position Mobility Express. If the customer needs advanced WLAN and RF features, maybe there's a need for a high density deployment, maybe there's a need for interference detection using Cisco Clean Air, position Mobility Express. With all the advanced features and everything, if they want a simple UI dashboard to set up and manage, position Mobility Express. And that brings up another good question, uh, Clean Air. I'm a huge fan of Cisco Clean Air just because of how well it mitigates interference with that full spectrum analyzer that's built into it, does Mobility Express give you the capabilities? Mobility yes, it does. Ah, it is. does with the 2800, 3800, and the 4800. The Clean Air chipset is already built into the hardware. So if you deploy Mobility Express with these APs, you will get the Clean Air capability. Great. So you're getting maximum uh, interference mitigation here. So you said this is simple. You said this was clean and easy to set up. Yep. Uh, can you show it to us real quick? Yes. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually set. Uh, I'm going to show you how to set up uh, using a Cisco wireless app, um, which is available for your Apple and Android devices, and um, it can also be set up using the web UI. But I'm going to show it to you how to do it via the Cisco wireless app. Excellent. Let's take a look at that. Okay. So Mobility Express can be deployed in a few easy steps. First, we'll create the admin account for the wireless controller. Second. We configure the system parameters, such as system name, selecting the country, configuring time, and we'll also configure the management IP address of the wireless and controller. And as a last step, we'll create an employee WLAN. So what I've done is I have powered up the Mobility Express access points, all three of them that you see on the table. And after power up, one of the APs will be elected as a master, which will run the controller function. And it will broadcast the provisioning SSID called the Cisco Air Provision. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually use my iPhone, and I'll first connect to the Cisco Air Provision SSID. When prompted for password, I'll enter password as password, and that would help me connect to the SSID. I'll then open up the Cisco Wireless app on my iPhone and click on the provisioning icon. And this will start the setup wizard. As you can see, the first step is to configure the wireless control admin account. And I'll just do that. Um, I'll create it as a, simple, um, as a simple one for this demo. As a second step, um, you know, I'll configure the system information. So I'll enter the system name. Let's just say it's MEWLC. I'll then select the country from the drop-down list, which is United States. And I'll scroll down. I'll then select the time zone. And let me select the Eastern Standard Time. Next, I'll configure the management IP address for the wireless LAN controller. So I'll enter the IP address 1010100.10. I'll enter the subnet mask followed by the gateway. And once I'm done that, as a last step, I'll create the wireless network. And let's just call it DNH. For security, I'll select PSK. And I'll enter the passphrase. At this point, I'm actually done. But optionally, what I can also do is I can enable RF parameter optimization. And under advanced settings, I can select the client density and the traffic type. Again, this is optional. It's not mandatory. Um, one can also do this you know, from the controller UI in day one. Finally, let's click and submit the commit uh, to commit the changes. And what this will do is it will cause the master AP to reboot. And, it and after it comes back up, it will run the controller function. 
And the remaining two APs that you see on the table will actually connect to this controller. So that was pretty easy. Simple interface, nice and easy walkthrough, and you did that all from your phone. Yes. That's pretty straightforward. So I got to tell you, um, what other features uh, are we going to get from Mobility Express? Because we get a lot of questions about, you know, can I set up a guest LAN? Uh, umbrella and security is everywhere. All kinds of questions about security. You know, can we integrate that in? You know, application visibility and control. Are these all features that Mobility Express can handle? Yes, Chef. So, you know, guest is a big piece for SMBs. Right? So we have multiple guest options that are supported. You can do internal web auth. You can do web auth with external splash pages. So we have a full support for guest development options. And um, starting with 8 mr one umbrella integration is also supported with Mobility Express. So you can apply umbrella policies to your guest WLANs. So let me ask you this, because we always get asked this question too. As simple as it is to set up, as nice and clean as the interfaces are, right. What about the guys who want to get in there and turn all the knobs? Who want to go in there and really dig deep? They need those advanced features. Can they still get to them? Absolutely. You know, so this is an this is an enterprise class product from Cisco for small to medium businesses. We have those advanced knobs for the RF geeks. So you can go into the expert view, and then you will have access to all the advanced knobs that they need to fine tune the deployment. We get asked that all the time. You make it nice and simple, but there's still those people that just need to go in there and they need to adjust yes. you know, some of those crazy settings. Um, why don't you show us what some of these features look like? I mean, it, I'd love to see how easy they are to set up. Sure, let me show you how to do that. Okay. okay. So Jeff, we set up the Mobility Express using the wireless app. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna log in to the controller dashboard using my web browser. So I'm going to come in here, open up the browser, and enter the controller IP address that I had configured uh, from the mobile app. So it's HTTPS 10.10.100.10. So the first thing that I'm presented with is to log in. And I'm going to enter my controller credentials that I had configured again when I was uh, setting up using the mobile app. So after login, you basically come to the landing page. And what you see on the landing page is it is actually a Mobility Express controller. And uh, on the left side, you have the navigation pane to go into the monitoring and the provisioning windows. And on the right side, what you see is a network summary, which shows you how many wireless networks are configured. We configured one wireless network during the initial setup, so we, it, sh it shows us one. And then we have three access points on the table. So it shows, a, it shows all the three access points. And um, what it also shows is a list of active clients in both the bands, 2.4 and 5. In this case, my laptop is connected to the DNH uh, SSID, and so is my iPhone. So you actually see two clients uh, connected at 5 gigahertz. And we can also see the, um, the number of rogues and interferers. In this case, right now, we don't have any interferers in, in the lab here. Scrolling down, you have these beautiful widgets. Um, the first widget shows you the access points by usage. So you know I have these three access points, and it kind of shows you uh, what the usage is. I can also click on the tabular format, and it kind of shows you uh, the numbers. Coming to the right side, as you can see, it shows the list of clients that are connected to the Mobility Express network. What are the different operating systems that they're using? Uh, what is the usage of these individual clients? And things like that. Like I mentioned before, you know, application visibility and control is supported on Mobility Express. Um, what you're seeing in this widget is a list of applications that the clients are actually browsing. It shows you the top 10 list of applications that the clients are browsing. And uh, if, let's say, I wanted to apply control to one of these applications, it's quite simple. All I need to do is just click on the application, uh, select the action, the type of control that I would like to apply, uh, let's say I want to drop this uh, and select the WLAN, and, and that's it. So you, you, you select the WLAN and you hit apply, and that's pretty much it. In terms of the operating systems, as I said, uh, you know, it shows you a list of operating systems, and, uh, and it also shows you uh, the number of clients for that corresponding app, uh, operating system. Now let's take a look at the access points. 
So we have uh, three access points. Let me click on one of them. So when I look at the access point details, you know, I can actually get information about what is the MAC address of the access point, what is the IP address, uh, what switch is it connected to, what is the interface on the switch side it is connected to, things like that. Uh, it also shows the capability of this access point in terms of, you know, it's 11N uh, 2.4, um, you know, max data rate is 144 and things like that. On the right side, when looking at the performance summary, I can see performance summary for both the bands, 2.4 and 5, and uh, it shows me the list of channels that is being used in each of these bands. So on the 5 gigahertz, you know, I'm using channel 52, 56, 60, and 64. Uh, there is no a client connected to this access point, so what I'll do is I'll actually go to another access point that has a client, so let's click on the other one. And this access point has one client connected at 5 gigahertz, as you can see here. It also shows me the interference, like the channel utilization, and interference for both 2.4 and 5 gigahertz. So as you know, we have three access points on the table here, and one of them is actually running the controller function. And it happens to be the 2800 series access point. Um, let's say we want to have a bit of control over which one would be elected as a master if, for whatever reason, you know, the 2800, let's say, goes down. Um, or, you know, maybe we want to change the master from the 2800 to another AP that we have here. How can we do that? So let me show you how to do that. Um, you go to wireless settings, click on access points, and what you will see here is uh, the first access point, which is the 2800. It has a P icon, which means that it's actually running the controller function right now, and it says primary controller. If I want to change the controller, so let's say the 1850i, what I can do is I can click and edit the AP, and I can click on Make Me Controller. And what this would do is it would right away move the controller from the 2800 to this 1850i. Additionally, what I can do is I can actually set it as a preferred master, and what that does is if, let's say, whatever the 2800 goes down, 1815i would be selected as the next master. You don't want the system to select the master. You want the user to define uh, you know, which AP should be elected as a master. So in that case, you want to come in here and set the preferred master. And you basically click on Apply button. And once you do that, uh, you know, the next preferred master would be uh, shown uh, with the gray P icon. Looking at the clients, so let's say I go to one of the clients. And this is my laptop. As you can see, it shows me the details about the access points, uh, sorry, about the clients, uh, you know, what the MAC address is, what is the SSID this client is connected to, um, what is the operating system. Uh, it also shows me how this client actually got connected, shows me the applications that this particular client is actually browsing and the usage, the different type of security and policies that this client is using, things like that. Moving on to best practices. Um, so on Mobility Express, one of the things that I want to mention is uh, when you provision Mobility Express, the wireless best practices, majority of them are already enabled out of the box. And we do this because when you have small to medium, medium customers, they may may not have an IT staff who is an expert at, at Wi-Fi. So to give them an optimal starting point from an RF and the Wi-Fi standpoint, what we do is we enable majority of the best practices by default. And as you can see here, 24 out of the 32 best practices are actually enabled. Let me now show you how to create a WLAN. And what I'll do is I'll create a guest WLAN. So to create a WLAN, what I need to do is I need to go into the wireless settings on the navigation pane, click on WLANs. Once I'm here, I click on the Add New WLAN button. And I can enter, let's say, an SSID, and I'll call it DNH Guest. If I want the operating system of the clients to be um, determined, I can click on Local Profiling. I click on Security. And this is a guest network that I'm trying to create. So I'll enable Guest Network. And what that does is it basically changes the options that are available for the guest WLANs. Um, Captive Network Assistant, I'll enable it because um, you know, there may be iPhone clients. And for this WLAN, I'll just select the captive portal as the internal splash page. And access type is just web consent. 
For application visibility and control, I can click on traffic shaping, come down, and enable application visibility and control. And I'll hit apply. And now my guest table line is created. It's as simple as that. The next thing that I want to show you is I would like to do umbrella integration with Mobility Express, and I would like to create a profile and apply the profile to the DNH guest WLAN that I've just created. So in order to uh, integrate Mobility Express with Umbrella, what I need to do is I need to first go into the expert view. So let's talk about what expert view gives you. So the flows in Mobility Express, the screens are pretty simple and they have limited options. But for those um, RF or the Wi-Fi geeks, if they want to have some advanced uh, knobs and whatnot, what they can do is they can click on the expert view on the top here. And what it does is it actually changes the screens or the UIs at the back. So once I, well, once I am in expert view, I can come to the navigation pane and I see that there is a new option called services. And uh, I go to services and I click on umbrella because that is what I want to do. So what I've done here is I've already copied the umbrella API token. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to just enable the umbrella service on Mobility Express and hit apply. So once I do that, you know, Mobility Express is already talking to the umbrella in the cloud. And my next step is to actually create an umbrella profile that I would register or I would map it to a WLAN, the, the DNH guest WLAN that I just created. So to create an umbrella profile, I click on the add profile, and I'll just call it guest, and I'll hit apply. And what this is going to do is it is going to try and register this profile with the umbrella in the cloud. And as you can see, that the profile is already registered. It happens pretty, pretty quickly. Now that I have created my umbrella profile, what I'm going to do next is go back to my DNH guest WLAN. So I go to wireless settings, WLAN. And I'm going to edit this because I want to map my umbrella profile to this WLAN. So let's just say yes. And as you can see, you know, we enable the expert view, so we have a lot more options here. So to map the umbrella profile to this WLAN, I'll click on the advanced tab, and I will scroll down. And for the umbrella profile, what I'll do is I'll select guest because that is what I named my profile to be. The next thing that I'm going to do is I can change my umbrella mode to forced. And what this does is, so you know, if you have umbrella enforcement, clients can always go and change the IP addresses on their client devices to avoid umbrella enforcement. But if you change the umbrella mode to forced, even if the client changes the IP address, the DNS IP addresses on their client devices, umbrella will always be enforced. And the next thing is to basically simply hit hit on the apply button. So the umbrella uh, integration is basically a couple of steps. One is you uh, start the service, you create the profile, register the profile, and then you map the profile to the WLAN, and you're pretty much done. The next thing that I would like to talk about are the upgrade options. So Mobility Express supports a whole bunch of different upgrade options. Uh, so in order to look at the software update options, uh, I go to Management, Software Update. And um, for the transfer mode, as you can see, I have the option of upgrading the Mobility Express deployment using HTTP, TFTP, SFTP, or even Cisco.com. So if the Mobility Express is connected to the internet, you know, one can actually update software directly from Cisco.com. If you have the same kind of access points in the Mobility Express network, the simplest way to actually update is to use the HTTP transfer mode. And when you do that, all you need to do is you basically browse to the local uh, AP image on your laptop. Let me show you some of the RF knobs. So given we are an expert view, we can actually see the advanced RF parameters. So as you can see here, you, know, you can enable 2.4 gigahertz or 5 gigahertz at the global level. You can enable flexible radio assignment or disable it. By default, it's enabled. Um, 
you can enable event-driven RRM, clean air detection, which is also enabled by, by default. And in terms of the channel width and the data rates, you can, and the channels, you can actually customize this. So these are the advanced RF knobs that are available to the Wi-Fi uh, experts if they want to further fine-tune their network. And what you're seeing right now is actually the default view of the um, RF parameters. We also support RF profiles. So by default, the system actually has six built-in RF profiles for low, typical, and high density for both 2.4 and 5. But you can also always create um, RF profiles. Let's say you want to create your own high density RF profile. You can create that and then apply to the AP groups. I also would like to show you um, uh, some things about security settings. So Mobility Express supports both pre-auth and post-auth ACLs, IP-based as well as uh, um, uh, DNS-based. So you can come under security settings, you can create ACLs, and uh, you can create it for IPv4, IPv6, and you can also add based on both IP rule as well as URL rules. And once you have created these ACLs, you can apply to the WLANs. So the next thing that I want to show you is, I'm going to show you how to look at some of the uh, uh, tools that the controller has. So I'm going to click on controller tools and under advanced from the navigation menu on the left. And um, I'll go into troubleshooting tools. So here, you know, it, it basically shows me what are my DNS servers that are configured on the network. I can also do a ping test or a DNS test. Um, if I have radius integration with Mobility Express, I can also check, uh, you know, if the Mobility Express can actually talk to the radius server or not using the tools that is that I'm showing here. In terms of configuration management, we can always export the configuration out from the controller to your local machine, and we can also import a configuration. So if you had multiple sites and pretty much all that sites are uh, cookie cutter models, you could create a configuration and you can import the configuration at each of the sites that is running Mobility Express. There is another thing that I want to mention, which is migrate Cisco Mobility Express deployment. So let's say you're running a 100 AP deployment with Mobility Express, and now there is a need to go to, let's say, 120 access points, so you need to buy 20 more access points um, um, and, and deploy them. Well, with Mobility Express, you can go to a maximum of 100. So to go to one, one, 120, uh, you may have to go to a controller-based deployment, let's say a 3504, which supports 150 access points. But your investment into the Mobility Express access points is actually protected. So you don't have to buy 120. You just buy 20 additional CAFAB access points. And what you can do is you can use your Mobility Express access points, uh, come here, enter the new controller come here, enter the new controller IP address and the controller name, and, it, and hit migrate. So in just one click, you will move all your Mobility Express access points to this appliance, let's say a 3504-based deployment. Well, that was pretty neat looking. Uh, you got to show us a lot of the great features. Uh, very easy to use. It, it can get advanced if it needs to. Um, you know, is that the only management option for Mobility Express? Uh, no, so we, you know, we showed you the mobile app. Um, we showed the web browser-based UI interface. But if you have a multi-site Mobility Express deployment, we have full support in DNS Center and Prime as well. So if you're using DNS Center to manage Mobility Express, you actually get both automation as well as assurance capabilities. Okay, so it can really grow with you. Absolutely. So just starting out and then moving up through DNA Center. Exactly. So if you have a smaller deployment, you can use the wireless app or the web UI. But if you have a multi-site deployment, go with DNA Center or Prime. Absolutely. Well, I got to tell you, thank you very much for joining us uh, today, Rajat. Uh, great, great learning on this. Uh, you know, in the end, what's the best value to SMB for Mobility Express? Right, right. So. For SMB, the best value is they don't really have to buy a controller hardware. You know, the controller function runs on the access points. They don't, they don't have to invest in the controller hardware up to 100 access points, right? These access points uh, are pretty affordable, and you don't need any AP license. On a controller-based deployment, you need AP licenses. But for Mobility Express, there is no license. So when you buy the access points with Mobility Express support, you are good to go. 
Excellent. Well, thank you again thank very you, much for joining us. Please stay tuned after for the uh, Q and A, uh, where you can answer, where we will answer any of your questions that you have on this particular subject matter. Uh, you can put your questions in the bottom in the Q and A box, and uh, we'll all be here to answer them for you. Thank you.